you're looking for the best ab exercises that actually deliver results, stay tuned my friend because in today's video I'm going to give you five exercises that will help you achieve exactly that. Crew members, <laughs> welcome back to the channel friends, how you doing today? It's always good to see you here on the other side of the camera. Again, although you're not actually on the other side of the camera, you know, this this just this just imagine it. But anyway, if this is your first time here on this channel, you need to subscribe to the channel and again, join everyone else on board the Gains Train Express because if you're new to body weight training calisthenics, this is your home of body weight strength training, so make sure you hit that button and turn on that bell. Right, so these exercises are going to scale from more of a beginner, shifting more to more advanced exercises. However, each exercise can actually be scaled to make the exercise easier or harder depending on what it is you want to achieve. So the first exercise I'm gonna go through with you is simply the front plank. And here we're going to promote basic core strength while stabilizing the spine and other muscles in the body. And as this has a large carryover to, you know, your main compound exercises in general fitness is why, you know, so many effective programs include the front plank. So of course, as I mentioned in other YouTube videos on this channel, the key cues with a plank is to ensure that your scapula remains protracted and depressed. And we do this by pressing out through our elbows and we're going to keep our core engaged, squeeze our glutes so that we can maintain the right body alignment to maintain good form standards. And so you know, for some people with front planks, whether you know you can hold it for sets of 20 seconds, 30 seconds, you know, keep on pushing. And then the point in which you, you know, find it fairly easy, you know, 60 to 90 seconds, of course, we want to ensure that the exercise remains challenging so that the core and the abs can actually regrow stronger and stronger for best results. And so with the plank, it can actually be progressed in a way in which instead of having our shoulders over our elbows, we can actually shift our body weight backwards through our toes by lengthening the lever. So you'll find that just this slight tweak in the exercise, if you actually try and hold the plank with your nose in line with your elbows, you will find the exercise substantially more challenging. However, if you put in the work, you put in the effort, you will be rewarded with more results in return. And similar with the front plank, the second exercise is going to be a side plank. And here we're going to have more of an emphasis on the obliques as well as other muscles in the lateral chain that tend to get neglected when traditionally only working in a sagittal plane. Now the reason why this is actually so effective is because your core has to stabilize not only your spine, but also the muscles in your hips. So once again, it's gonna have a very large positive carryover to other bodyweight exercises. The two keys I want you to focus on with side planks is one, that the shoulders are over the elbows, and two, you're squeezing your glutes tight so that you can maintain the right body alignment as well as full body tension to fight against the anti-rotational element and component that is involved with side planks. If this is too hard, you can simply drop down onto your knees or you can actually stagger your feet so you have a wider base of support to work from. But to actually progress the side plank, you can go from a bent arm side plank to a straight arm side plank so that your elbow is straight throughout. As most of us actually struggle with weak and inactive hips, we could seriously fire up those abductors by doing what's known as a starfish side plank. And so whichever progression you're currently working at, you'll know that this slight tweak in the variation will not only make the exercise harder, but will force you to have to embrace and squeeze your gluteal muscles much harder. Now the third exercise, which you know, as a calisthenics enthusiast, I'm sure you've seen it many times, is the hollow body. But the reason why the hollow body is strongly emphasized with so many programs and training routines is because when it comes to bodyweight exercises, such as, you know, push-ups, pull-ups, handstands, rows, all that good stuff, is that we have to maintain a hollow body position by posteriorly tilting the pelvis and maintaining that position throughout these exercises so that the core can stabilize the body in the most effective way. Whereas with the hollow body, we're literally training and teaching our body and our nervous system to elicit that motor pattern. You know, if you're an OG on this channel, you've probably watched my hollow body tutorial on this channel already, but if you haven't, then I'll leave the link to that video right here in this card so that you can check it out in full. The main cue, of course, is to ensure that you're lower back remains fixed against the ground and you maintain the right proper form standards. And in terms of progressing or regressing the hollow body, the level of intensity is mainly going to be dictated 
by you know how high or low your legs are relative to the ground. So the higher your legs are, the easier it's going to be, but the closer your legs are and your feet are towards the ground, the harder the exercise is going to be. And also one thing I like to assign with my clients is to actually do this dynamically with exercises such as hollow body knee raises so we can build strength in a greater range of motion. Another exercise I like to assign with my clients when learning the hollow body and building strength through this motor pattern is single leg hollow body raises. Which <laughs> <laughs> Some of them don't like me this for. But it's really an exercise that has a lot of benefits because when you're pulling with straight legs, you're building hip flexor strength as well as hamstring flexibility at the same time. So you now when you're building strength and mobility in just one exercise, you're building two critical elements which are needed as you progress in calisthenics. Now the fourth exercise I want to show you is the dip bar leg raises because similar to what I've just said, when you're actually pulling with straight legs, you're not only going to be building core strength and stronger abs, you're also going to be building hip flexor strength and hamstring flexibility at the same time. The best way you're going to get results from your ab training is by actually doing exercises that provide you the biggest bang for your buck. And so exercises such as the dip bar leg raises where you're building strength and mobility simultaneously help you achieve exactly that. So with your elbows remain straight and your scapula depressed, you're going to pull your legs up with straight legs to about 90 degrees or just above parallel to the ground and then lower down with control. The stricter you do this exercise, the better. We can scale this exercise down by doing knee raises on a dip bar so that instead of having our knees kept straight, we're going to slightly have them bent. Or if you want to scale this exercise up, you can actually add in a cheeky L sit for a second or two after each repetition. Whichever one allows you to remain challenged without compromising your form is the one that you should select. Now lastly, number five, which is something I'm sure you've seen on this channel enough already, if you're an OG on this channel, is hanging leg raises. Because like with the dip bar leg raises, we're going to build core strength as well as mobility in the legs. And also other areas that are very important for the calisthenics athletes, such as a bit of strength in the serratus interior, as well as overhead mobility, and a bit of strength in those scapular retractors too. And the progressions and the regressions are exactly the same. Instead of pulling with straight legs, if it's too hard, you can then do this with bent legs. But regardless, a great exercise with the hanging knee raises is that when you actually pull higher, for example, going from just knee in line with your torso to your knee almost towards your chest, you're gonna lengthen the lever and increase the intensity of the exercise and further build ab strength. If your obliques won't wake up, you can wake them up by doing side to side hang knee raises by pulling more to one side and then the other for equal repetitions as you'll be placing more load on each side of your abdomen. Now there's so many variations you can do in terms of ab work on the bars, let alone ab exercise in general, but I'm just gonna keep, I'm just gonna keep these exercises short and simple so that you can actually practically apply them more effectively. And so remember, your abs work best when they are worked in unison with the rest of your body. So when you do exercises, ab exercises, that forces you to do that, that's how you are going to gain the most results and the results you desire in the most efficient and effective way. And so, with that said, if you enjoyed this video, if you like my content, you enjoyed watching every single minute and every single second of this video, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up and comment down below that this video came in good hands you. Right, so as that's enough for me today, I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day, my friend, and as a crew member of the Gainstrain Express, keep moving forward.